Hi, so welcome to my 101 things to do with Conductive Ink as part of my Indiegogo campaign. If you want to contribute, the Indiegogo is down in the description, so please just click on it and all contributions are gratefully received. Now then, I was uh, working with this stuff, which is sponge, and all I did really with it was dip it in the ink, and I'd mix the ink 50-50 with water, and I let it dry, and what I got was this, which is a uh, flexible conductive sponge, and I was mulling that one over. So what I've done is I've taken a sheet of aluminium, a piece of um, kitchen towel, you just pop one on top of the other, set that up so you can see it, connect one electrode to the aluminium, the other electrode to a bit of sponge and put the sponge on top there. That, believe it or not, is a battery. Obviously it doesn't work at the moment. Let's turn it on because it needs some electrolyte. So what I've got here is just salt water, ordinary salt water. And you pour the salt water through the sponge until it wets the paper towel. And you will see immediately that has jumped up to 0.68 volts. So there we go. That is probably one of the simplest batteries ever. A metal air battery. All metal air batteries are actually the same thing. What you have is a metal of some kind, a separator to stop the two things touching, and then a carbon material here. Now, a lot of people are using activated carbon, and the reason they're using activated carbon is it's conductive and it's got a large surface area and it allows the passage of um, air. Because a metal air battery is utilising the chemistry of the metal rusting. So any metal that will rust is actually going to work here. Now, we predominantly use, or a lot of people are using aluminium. Now, you use aluminium because it's readily available who can't go and buy some kitchen foil. But you can use iron, you can use magnesium, you can use lots of things here. Anything that's going to rust actively is going to make a good metal air battery. Now, in order to get the contact here, what you have to add is an electrolyte. Now, the common electrolyte that you see is good old salt water. And that's kind of cool because, again, you can buy salt absolutely anywhere. If you live by the sea, you can just go and get yourself a bucket of sea water. If you want to construct and play with batteries, then um, if you want a battery that's got a really good application, a seawater battery is going to be great. Because you wrap up all the dry ingredients, the battery will last forever until you dip it in the sea and you've suddenly got an emergency battery that you can carry around with you uh, and use at sea. So it's a great thing to use salt water. It isn't necessarily the best thing to use. Um, with these uh, aluminium air batteries, what makes a really, really good electrolyte is potassium hydroxide. But pot potassium hydroxide is really quite caustic. So um, you have to be careful in handling it because if you, you spill it anywhere, it's going to eat right the way through in a matter of seconds. And I spilled some on my dining room floor carpet and it left a hole about that big in about 20 minutes. My wife wasn't happy. We now have to keep a pot plant in the middle of the kit in the dining room. It's a real problem. Uh, you can use sodium hydroxide as well, which isn't quite as lethal as potassium hydroxide. And they make good electrolytes. And there's a whole host of electrolytes. The electrolytes really make the electrical contact between this one and this one and help with the oxidation reduction reaction. And that's what you're looking for when you're uh, trying to choose an electrolyte, something like that. Now, this one here has a number of jobs to pay, uh, play. It has to promote the reaction, it has to be conductive to collect the electrons, and it has to allow the passage of air. So a very common material is activated carbon. Um, Stefan is using carbon fibre as well, and that's going to be good because um, it does all of those jobs. It doesn't have a particularly high surface area, but you can actually improve the surface area of carbon fibre if um, you dipped it in hydrochloric acid for a little bit. That will uh, actually make the fibre, instead of being tight bundles like that, spring out a little bit. And because they spring out a little bit, he'll get a much better surface area. So if you tried um, pre-etching his carbon fibre with hydrochloric acid, 
then it's going to get a better job. You could try nitric acid. Uh, nitric acid is great for cutting carbons. Um, but you'd have to be quite careful with that and uh, experiment for the time that you left it in the nitric acid and the concentration of the nitric acid. So any of those kind of strong mineral acids are going to improve a carbon fibre because they improve the area. Um, and that's what you're looking for. Now what I've done obviously is taken a pre-existing sponge with a high area already and then I've coated that area with my conductive ink. Um, so it really becomes a very simple process of taking the sponge, dipping it in the ink, letting it dry and suddenly you have this um, electrode structure sitting there already made for you so the battery becomes really a piece of cake you get yourself a sheet of metal some kind of metal that will rust aluminium is really cool magnesium would be better um, iron would be okay you stick a separator on it and a separator is again a really simple thing but a kitchen towel will do it there are better separators which are the microporous um, plastics that they're using in actual batteries but kitchen towel will do it just fine you take your carbon material again here we've got our ink soaked sponge drop it on the top and pour on your electrolyte your electrolyte will soak through make the contact help with the uh, oxidation reaction that's going on there and the battery will run now it is an aluminium air battery. So remember the chemical energy is coming from the interaction between aluminium and the air. And you're forming aluminium oxide. That reaction is what generates the electricity for you. The um, metal plate you use as one electrode, you can't use the other electrode, and that's where you get your energy out from to run your motor or light your light or something like that. So all air batteries, all the metal air batteries are going to have these same principles in them. And playing around with them is really a matter of um, finding somewhere that has the highest potential, uh, the cheapest construction cost, the um, ease of doing it, all that sort of stuff. Um, safety, how safe is it going to be? All that sort of stuff is going to come into play when you're looking at batteries. But essentially that's it. So, some of the problems with it. Um, the ink that I put onto the sponge isn't actually waterproof, it's a water soluble ink. So when you pour the electrolyte on, which is in case just salt water, it does actually wash the ink gradually off the sponge, and obviously that's not very good. Now I do have a waterproof conductive ink, it's just not ready yet. Which is one of the real reasons for the Indiegogo campaign, is to um, develop these inks for all these kind of uses. So I've got a waterproof ink developed, I need to develop it just a little bit further, and then what we have is something that we can dip a sponge in, and wrap some aluminium and paper in it and if you take that on a boat with you you could just dip it in the sea and you have an immediate salt water battery i mean i think that's really kind of cool so if you feel like um supporting this kind of work then the indiegogo campaign address is just below please do click on it all contributions are gratefully received anyway if you don't feel like contributing i hope you enjoyed the video and i hope you um, found it fun thank you for watching